It's fine. <laughs> Office hours number two. Thanks for joining us. Welcome Nick, back. This, I don't know how else to describe it other than that it was thick. It was very dense. Yeah. Very. A lot of stuff that we talked about in this one. A lot of things that people are potentially going to have some controversial opinions on, which is fine, right? We have to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely for me, and I'm sure for you too, work in progress on understanding this stuff and feeling well informed yes and i think we'll tie this back to um, this is the reason why we're having people who are mainly experts in their field talk about these topics because uh, we really want to be informed and learn a lot more about it but yeah we're just going to share our opinions our kind of comments about what we thought was interesting but by no means are our opinions super informed um, we're encouraging feedback here. Yeah. We want people to give us their input because like Nick said, the point of these conversations is to get multiple perspectives and to take in multiple pieces of information. We may be missing something that's super important to making an informed decision. And we want to continue the conversation so that this can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to start this out, I think that I want to emphasize that this interview with Dr. Cloward was super cool. I think because um, while he really shared his opinion and which side he's on, he took an approach that was step by step in explaining why his opinion is this way. Yeah. Um, and so it, even if you disagree, like, I think that it's something that you need to be able to respect for sure. I think that like you're saying he did a, he is well educated on this. He's well read on this. So he's come to a place where his opinion is well informed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do also think that he had a really good, he was, he was also very open to the opposing ideas that may be confronting his opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, uh, important, but obviously he's kind of come to the conclusion where he's at also. So like having the respectful, like he is where he is, but, like, let's talk about it. I think that's kind of the approach he took too. Yeah. Which is super valuable. It's yep. the whole reason why we're doing this. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm curious what is on your mind after we did that interview? Yeah. I think the thing that I've been working through the most is things that I'm not fully certain that I agree with. I'm trying to just like really sit with like, am I a hundred percent all in with what he was saying on X, Y, or Z topic? Or do I feel like maybe this needs some more analysis? One of the things right off the top is uh, the idea of capitalism. Mm -hmm. I I don't know where I stand because on one hand, to get to where we are now as a society, we definitely needed capitalism and the progress that comes from capitalism. But on the other hand, I am so in favor of not like inflating the 1% even further at the sacrifice of making a greater income gap or whatever it is and having all these homeless people. I don't think that's a good thing either. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where I stand. There's a lot of benefits to capitalism, but obviously there are some people who get negatively impacted by that and that needs to be addressed too. So that was one thing that jumped out at me for sure. Anything on your mind or do you want to dive into that? I think that that's a good thing to think about, um, like finding a balance between social programs Mm -hmm. and then also a capitalistic society. But like, I think this all comes back to kind of what he was explaining is like, why are we having these social programs? Like, what is the reason behind it? And he Mm -hmm. kind of points to towards that, like economic disparity as to why we need to put these social programs in place. Right but they're going to stay in place with this uh, huge gap between the rich and the poor. Um, So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss too with this. Like I think there needs to be a balance because I do think there are benefits to capitalism and then there are huge benefits to social programs Mm -hmm. um, like education. Yep. Uh, So like, I think healthcare is something that everybody should have. That's a quality of life. And a, just a, like a 
part of being a human being should be that if you're sick, you should be able to get care. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's super important too, you know? Yeah. And this goes back to his statement about if you want to understand what a society values, look at what they spend their money on. Right. And like the overwhelming amount of our budget is towards military. Mm -hmm. And while I think defense is something that is very important, I don't know the details enough to say like this needs to be cut this way so that other, these other programs can be budgeted. But Mm -hmm. I do think it is pretty sad to think about how education only gets around 1% of the budget. Right. I looked online and I found that it was, there were numbers saying like 59.9 billion or like 64 billion of like a $4.4 trillion dollar And it's like, what, yeah. how, <laughs> how can we really value yeah. knowledge, um, education and advancement if we're not putting the right amount of funds into something that is so critical to our being? Yeah. I mean, even just like, relating it back to like the pandemic right now right like not only are schools so important because kids are getting educated but like it's a they're a massive contributor to a functioning society like work is workplaces are taking a hit because people have to take care of their kids because schools are closed Mm -hmm. right so there's so many factors that go into like why school and education is so important and it goes like so deep into the way we function as a society but yeah i mean we definitely need to reprioritize education in this country because I mean, it's just, I I don't know what to say other than like what we have to be an educated society. Mm -hmm. We have to be in all aspects. Yeah. We have like, that's how we're going to progress and grow and develop and make things better is if we continue to educate ourselves and put ourselves in a position to learn things that, are important and need to be need to be taught. So I agree. I think, you know, one to go from one to 2%, which like, obviously, we're talking about big numbers here. So, um, you know, to go to 2% of the national budget would be like a ton of money. But it feels like it would be a small price to pay on other programs to really make a statement that we're caring about the education in this country. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, people shouldn't have to be worried that they're sending their kids, you know, to public school in a bad area and they don't know if their par- their kids are going to get the education that they need or if their schools are going to have the supplies that they need to properly educate. And obviously this is a first world problem, right? Like there's so many, so many schools and places that don't have schools in the world. Um, and there's a lot to be said about that, you know needing to take care of those people too but we have the means as a country to su- supply that for our people and uh it needs to be looked at i think a little more seriously mm-hmm. yeah i completely agree um i think the the hard part about this for me has been that i we just don't really know like yeah. we can do all this research understand these concepts but i feel like i just don't really know what kind of power people at this political level have yeah like what kind of control and i think this is what you were talking about how when we vote i think voting so important um i think a lot of people should vote uh at the same time i think it is a challenge because a lot of votes are misinformed and we yeah. like we just don't have the capability of understanding what somebody like in congress or in the presidency like what kind of power they have and yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can And who's do more funding research. them? Yeah. You know, like where to get their campaigns to push the initiatives that they're going to push, who is the dollar behind that initiative and is it something that you would also support, right? Like mm-hmm. there's so much you know, not to be like conspiracy theory, but like there's so much behind the scenes things that go on within the government that we don't know about that if we had known, we may choose things differently, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I think that, like, we kind of talked about it with uh, Dr. Cloward, but, like, this whole idea that the one, you know, the 1% of the 1%, like, that's really who we're talking about here. Yeah. The people who have, you know, family money or are business owners, like, of the biggest businesses in the world, 
they get to put their money where they want to so they can get things done that will benefit themselves. And it's not to say that everybody's like this, Mm -hmm. but there's definitely people like this. Yeah. And, you know, where are they putting their money and for what reasons? That's not talked about enough. Like, and maybe it's just not popularized enough because, I mean, I don't know who's the controlling side of every news outlet, but I mean, there's so much money being thrown around by companies who are just trying to get their company the benefit of having that person in office so that they can have them in their back pocket. Mm -hmm. And while one thing I do want to make sure we touch on is that while we had a lot of moments in our conversation, like the one that we're talking about right now that are fairly pessimistic and negative, there's still so much positive that we can do. And I don't want, I didn't want that conversation in hindsight to be like this doom and gloom because like there's so much good that can still be done. Right. Yeah. He did say that there is progress. Yeah. So like even with the, you know, funding of campaigns through private dollars, like doesn't mean that we have to like be all negative about, the campaigns or the initiatives or whatever is coming out. Like we just need to inform ourselves and get ourselves further in the line of timeline of progress than we are today. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to keep pushing that, um, that forward and everybody needs to take responsibility for themselves. And that's as a collective, we will then move towards the right place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's super true because I, I feel like I get caught in that, um, like powerlessness feeling Mm -hmm. or that, I just can't do anything in this yeah. society, you know? Um, so I think that is a very good point that we are progressing to a certain extent in specific ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also wanted to touch on, he later on in the interview, he talked about people kind of checking out. Mm-hmm. And as I've thought about this a little more, it's, <laughs> I mean, that movie, The Social Dilemma just came out. I haven't seen it. Everybody says it's, pretty crazy but yeah thinking about the power that um social media companies hold Mm -hmm. they're like feeding into this like power to have people check out Mm -hmm. and while i don't know there might be the other side of it that now people are more engaged through social media with politics but i do think it is a sense of like you go home watch tv you check out a little bit you don't have maybe some other meaningful things in your life and so you check out and you let this stuff slide by. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. It's like, are we moving more towards that with the expansion of social media, the expansion of technology, or are we getting more engaged with these avenues of getting access to information? I mean, I personally think that we are allowing technology to take us further away from the characteristics that people have that make them human. There's a personal and self-development characteristic in people, a curiosity in people that I think gets shut off when we can take our two, two, three, four hour long, um, sessions where we are just like vicariously like envying other people's things and what they're doing or what we they have that we don't have Mm -hmm. and i think it it not only takes disconnects us from some of the things that make us naturally human but i think it also is like promoting a very meaningless experience like Mm -hmm. it's providing a lot of opportunity for people to look at their own life and think man, I don't have that, or I wish I had that. And I think it's super destructive to mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I I personally do not think that social media has taken on the right place in society. But again, to go like glass half full on the other side of this, like there's a ton of benefit that can come from social media if we're equipped to handle it. I think that's the big thing. And we're just not equipped to handle it. We haven't gotten to the point where like people need to talk about this. You know, we we haven't had generations of negative impact from this yet where people are going to be like, you've got to look out for social media because it's going to negatively impact you. 
Um, but it's a resource, you know, like there's good things, like the fact that we can have a moment like what happened in Minneapolis this year, go viral and, you know, in some senses, unite the country mm-hmm. for a very positive goal, I think is super important. We need that because yeah. We are a collective people who are all voting together. We have a voice together. And I think that's super important to be able to exercise that voice. And it kind of goes back to being well-educated on Mm -hmm. the topics, right? I mean, if I didn't know that the police brutality was what it was every time this stuff pops up, I wouldn't have an educated thought of what it is if I'm living in a place where I don't see it, Mm -hmm. right? So I think it brings shines a really positive light so that's some of the positives of it right i mean like we we need this information out there obviously people have to hand be able to handle that and um you know be willing to take responsive responsible action towards what's really going to get us to a better place um but i think that there's a ton of benefit that can come out of social media too but i mean I don't know. There's so much. I want to say it's on the individual and I know it's not like for me, I want to be able to take personal responsibility, but I also know that, um, maybe that's just me speaking as somebody who's been, who's lived through my own lens Mm -hmm. and other people haven't lived through my lens. So they are in the position where they need help. So maybe it's not on, it can't be on them because they're not, in a position where that's something that they can do. Um, I think as I'm even just like going through all these different pieces of this, it brings me back to like the whole conversation is just so nuanced as we get into the politics of it, into like the social justice of it, the personal responsibility of it. There's so much nuance in this that, um, I just bring it back to like people have to educate themselves and like work on themselves to like get there. And they need people who are willing to help help them work on themselves, mm-hmm. as I think is important too. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> listening to you and hearing what you were just saying and hearing you kind of go back and forth speaks to that nuance and speaks to that complexity. Yeah. Because I've been trying to think about like how I want to respond to this and approach this too. And yeah, it's easy for me to say, well, maybe I should just detach from this and focus on myself. Mm -hmm. And to an extent, I think there's a benefit in that and just really having your own mental space. Yeah. But at the same time, like the system's not working against me. So how can I speak to that? Mm -hmm. Like I come from a place of privilege. And so it's easy for me to say that when, if there was, if I was somebody who is being oppressed by a system, I can't just detach that easily. You know, it's not Mm -hmm. that simple. Right. Um, So there's so much to this, to how it affects so many different types of people. Um, And I think if we were to tie it back into what we talked about in our first office hours, was that we have to be empathetic to people. In general, yes. Empathy is like so crucial. And I think choosing the proper time and place to express empathy is something that's it's going to be crucial, right? Like we have to, we need each other to get to the place that we're trying to go as Mm -hmm. a society. We need people who are willing to step up and do the right thing. We need people who are willing to speak. We need people who are out there willing to educate and we can't judge people for where they're coming from. We have to try and meet people where they are and like help bring up collectively like positivity and, uh, and what we're trying to do, because at the end of the day, we all just want to live like, I don't know that there's anybody who said who wouldn't say, like, do you want to be happy? Do you want to live in a society where you can be happy? I think we all want that. Mm-hmm. So how can we get there together? Um, I think is an important question that we need to be thinking about, especially as we're talking about, like how people are contributing to that, you yeah. know? And I think that's why I really believe that Dr. Cloward's like point of view and argument is so fascinating because he talks about how our system is set up um, to reward people for economic growth and like for greed Mm -hmm. rather than promoting each other and like 
providing meaning to each other's lives yeah. and promoting this happiness. And yeah. that's something that's just been on my mind. It's like, we can do it on an individual basis, but when there is this power difference that's affecting us, um, are kind of affecting people's lives and really reaching a meaningful life or promoting happiness universally, then like, what are we, how do we approach that and what do we do about it? Um, so yeah, it's, I, I really value his point of view. Like you said, I don't know if I agree with everything, but I am also not as informed as him. So yeah, I can't really comment on that. But I, I also think that the point that he was talking about how history moves slowly Mm -hmm. And I think he was speaking to a general like homeostasis that like our lives have and that history um, stays on, like it stays on this baseline and it gradually goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could see how he mentioned people like MLK, uh, Malcolm X. We talked about Harvey Milk. Um, these people get shot down when they try to speak up and move history faster. Mm -hmm. And that's so interesting to think about because there is like this steady line. Um, but at the same time, I'm thinking too about like, are we just accepting that there is a homeostasis or is that a system that it is in place that is wrong, that is faulty? And that's why these things are being pushed down. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just thinking about what you just said with the people who've tried to move history faster um, and how, you know, some, a lot of them pay for it with their life. I'm also trying to like reconcile this moment. And, and even like, you know, JFK was brought up in the interview too, as having the same fate, right? Trying mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of speaking out against some of the things that were being done in this country that he didn't think should be kept from the American people. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious if that the death of those individuals, maybe that is the moment where they are able to push history faster. Mm. And like their goal while they're living is to move history forward, but only with through their death are they actually able to prove everything that they've set out to prove and that's when the shift happens mm -hmm. it's an interesting that's a good point it's a, it's a very interesting point i mean because as unfortunate as it is you know those people that were we talk about those people for a reason because they have had such you know like you said martin luther king malcolm x jfk they were all doing something positive in the world they were all pushing for something better for human the human race and we talk about them oftentimes because they have been killed mm -hmm. you know that is some that is a huge part of their story that keeps them in our textbooks in school right so it's just interesting to think of that you know that thought provoking question that he kind of brought up where these people pay for their life with their life when they try and move history too fast, but maybe that is the ultimate forward motion of history. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think that's a, I think it's important to look at that side too. Um, but it's, it's kind of hard to sit with at the same time. Yeah, it is. I, I, these people are just pushing for good. And, yeah. And it shouldn't be how it is. No. Right. Um, but restate your original question because I just couldn't get that thought out of my mind as we were talking about. Um... No, I, I think that you hit on it. I think that I kind of explained it in just that uh, Dr. Cloward spoke to a general homeostasis in how history moves. Mm -hmm. And you were hitting on that, like, some, I don't, like, while there might be a homeostasis, I think that that can get pushed faster based on these events that happened yeah but i don't know yeah there's there's just so much to this and i think like due to the present climate of um what politics are today like it's so important to keep this conversation going and mm -hmm. i i hope that people can be more involved be better informed i think it is 
I think that's the part I'm struggling too is this piece about being informed mm-hmm. because it's hard. There's yeah, and it's like <laughs> what what are we supposed to listen to? Uh, what are we supposed to trust? Really, mm-hmm. um, what is the information that we should care about most? Because yeah. there's so much out there, and people have their own lives. Mm-hmm. Um, like, what really should we be trying to do with our time? Um, it's a lot because yeah, we can't just discount that. People have families, people have jobs, people have yeah. school. People, people have, have lived experiences that inform their decisions in a way that you and I will never understand. Yeah. You know? So like, yeah, how can we ever feel like we've got the full picture on mm-hmm. what to understand? Yeah. What is an informed opinion? Yeah. Right. Oh man. It's crazy. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> Brendan said this one was dense. And it was dense. I think multiple times in this session right here, I started talking about one thing, talked about seven different things, and then concluded it by not wrapping it back up to what we were talking about in the beginning. <laughs> and I think that is just a hallmark of how much this conversation is very, like there's so much variance. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'll compare it to like, like being a doctor, you can be a, like a doctor, but you can also specialize in probably like 25, 30 different specialties, maybe more, maybe more. So like, how do you know if you're talking to somebody who's like a heart, a cardiologist that they know anything about like gastroenterology or something, you know, like a gut doctor and a heart doctor don't, on a regular basis see the same things so how do we know that we're not just taking the perspective of a heart doctor Mm. yeah because maybe there's something going on in the gut that we don't understand and i think just like this whole like if we we need to approach the politics of this the way we need to approach health and that's a full body system government and politics is such a wide ranging system and if we don't understand all of it we may not understand any of it Mm -hmm. yeah and that's the threatening piece right yikes (laughs) maybe we just don't understand i i think that's probably what it is probably (laughs) it's a it's a little misinformed but you know i think these are uh like good thoughts and good things to talk about Mm -hmm. and i i also wanted to add that so i did take one of Dr. Cloward's uh, political science classes um, like six years ago or so. But while he comes on with all these, um, his opinions, like he definitely shared his opinions throughout this interview, his class I really valued because he really has a thorough discussion about these topics with his students. He doesn't force any opinions on any student. Mm -hmm. Um, He presents these ideas might share his opinion, but he's not pushing on anybody um, what he wants them to believe. And I think that that's why I really enjoyed hearing his voice because it was something that just came from a place to where I could tell that was very educated. He thought a lot about this. I could tell that he cares a lot about it. And so um, we were just hopeful that what he talked about could be helpful to our listeners and helpful to all of you and maybe spark up some conversation, spark up some thought. Um, Like we said, it might feel pessimistic at times, but uh, I think it's good to be real with a lot of things. And this is kind of just the reality of what's going on today. And the less informed we are, there might be a bigger divide that continues to happen. So um, I'm going to take it upon myself to really try to be more informed. Uh, And it's, it's challenging and it's pretty daunting. Um, But at the core, I think what you touched on earlier is just this piece about empathy, Um, really being willing to hear people out, listen to others' opinions, uh, understand, try your best to understand where other people are coming from, is just going to be at the core of really trying to connect with others and Mm -hmm. really building our society so that we support each other. Yeah. So let's just, let's keep practicing empathy, yeah? Seriously, I'm down. All right. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, um, this is Office Hours, episode two. We broke down a lot of different things. Um, We would love to hear some of your opinions, some of your thoughts about a lot of this information because it, like we said, it's so dense. 
there are so many different ways to go about this, ways to approach this, ways to think about this. And um, yeah, it's so much. It is. It's crazy. And, you know, hopefully everybody else can take us something out of this interview that we did and maybe, you know, educate themselves on one thing that they hadn't thought of before. And then, you know, maybe I think at the end of the day, we just want people to maybe put down some of their ideologies on some of this stuff and just really listen, like you said, and like come to a complete informed decision. Um, because that's what we need to do in order to maintain a, uh, high functioning society. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, thanks for stopping by. Um, stay tuned for our next episode of a new interview next week. And we look forward to doing another office hours the week after that. We'll be back. All right. Thanks. Thanks.